Before Val goes insane, I just want to tell everybody to keep the lanes clear here. This will be a packed house. I'm sure we're going to uh, have every seat taken. Yes, so absolutely. If you're sitting in the seat, please, airplane rules, no bags in the aisleway, everything underneath your seat. A premier matchup from opposite ends of the country, of course, Rose City out of Portland, Oregon, and of course, Philly Road. Mic check one, two. Please give it up for everybody that has volunteered that wears an orange shirt that is giving their time to make. Can you turn the ambient mic down a little bit? It should be all the way down. Oh, no. There's a lot of great events in roller derby. There's a lot of things happening, but roller con is a true expression of what the culture and the lifestyle of roller derby is all about. Absolutely. Roller con is a special time. There's all the workshops. Mic check one, two. Hello, my name is Justice Gilgan Marshall. We are on DerbyNewsNetwork.com getting ready for the first bout of Saturday action at RollerCon. It's going to be a Rose City number two in the world via DNN versus Philly number nine in the world versus DNN. And Philly just defeated number eight Rocky Mountain last night by a final of 172 to 116. A really penalty heavy game for Rocky Mountain. My name is Justice Fielder Marshall. I'll be joined by Val Capone in second here. Right now, it looks to be an equipment check right before the beginning of this game. Over the course of 2012, Rose City now. Seven and one, their only loss to Gotham last month at ECDX. They lost that one by 221 to 152. Pretty close game. Overall on the year, Philly is four and three. Wins over Montreal, Nashville, Charm City, and as we said earlier, last night over Rocky Mountain. And that's going to be kind of interesting because the uh, RollerCon crowd obviously a little bit West Coast heavy. We have a Denver, Rose City, 
uh, Rocky Mountain out here, and Philadelphia is going to be the only West, or excuse me, East Coast team centric at this uh, weekend's events. And I'm competing in the track right now. Last night, uh, it really seemed that the crowd was really behind Rocky, but over the course of the evening, I think uh, Philly kind of won him over with a very effective jamming from V Diva, Teflon Donna, Mo Payne, and some a absolutely killer blocking from Kenny the Stretcher. Once again, this is the third game of six this weekend at RollerCon 2012 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Later today at 3.15 p.m. So Pacific time, will be a Phillies playing again against Minnesota. And at 7 p.m. Pacific, Rose City versus Denver should be a really good game. That is uh, DNN 2 versus DNN 3. Both of those teams uh, losing to Gotham at ECDX, but both of them also having pretty much an ironclad case for 2 and 3 in the nation. So pretty much a battle for number 2 happening 7 p.m. tonight, Pacific, Rose City, and Denver. And tomorrow, one game at 12.15 Pacific. That is Rose, excuse me, Denver versus Minnesota just a little bit after noon on Sunday, July 29th. Uh, as we've been saying, actually, uh, all weekend long and last weekend at uh, Star of Texas, it's really interesting about this uh, pivot line, start, excuse me, gamma line start that the teams love so much these days, is that you'll often see five minutes before the game, the teams going to the pivot, to the jammer line, so they can make sure that they're going to have that ideal position long before the game actually starts. We are through equipment checks, but the, the refs have not yet called the teams to the track, but Philly wanting to get on that jammer line as soon as possible, already camped out there a good three minutes before the game. It kind of looks like they're actually marking their tour territory, Justice, right. <laughs> if you will. I think that that is the voice of Val Capone. I know you thought it was a man, but it is me. <laughs> So it looks like the referees are almost ready to start this game. They're talking about some things, as they do. But both teams now on the track, with Philadelphia taking the rearmost position at the jammer line. So to kick off this game, it looks like it's going to be Philadelphia's got a V Diva out there. And v Diva was actually voted the MVP in yesterday's bout. I think, is that the Blast that's Unicorn? It's hard to tell from here. That's Celia Devour. Celia Devour. I believe, yes. So, oh, I'm sorry. That's the Blast Unicorn. Okay. Yes, yeah, 17H. We apologize, folks. We are kind of high up in the Derby News Network castle in the sky, and it, <laughs> it is quite a distance away from the track, so we appreciate your patience and understanding. If we do have a little name faux pas every now and again, thank you very much for your patience. As we were saying before, uh, it, it'll be a little bit easier for us probably to see the Rose City names than the Philly names as they are. Uh, Good thing yeah. I'm such a psycho super fan of Philly that I don't even <laughs> need the roster. That's right. Let's see who's out there right now. That's uh, Heavy Flow is kneeling closest to the infield. And I want to say that's Ivana. Oh, yeah. no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> We have some uh, Rose City pivot dancing out there. That's Devoid of Mercy, I believe, kneeling next to Heavy Flow. <laughs> so I believe that's uh, Mel Mangles with the Rose City pivot cap is uh, dancing out there, also at uh, number 94. Scrappy Go Lucky, closest to us on this side. But it's hard to tell who is on the far side of that Rose City back right now. Looks like we're almost ready to go here. All right, they're showing the five seconds, so we're going to get ready to go in just a moment here. First whistle, and the jammers are now off. And if by off you mean backing into a wall of blockers, yes, that is a fact. <laughs> but out first, of course, with Lee Jammer. There she is, 18-18, MVP of yesterday's bout. That is B Diva, a recent transplant to Philly Roller Girls. And I got to say, she is an excellent addition to their already very stellar program. She gets passed, picks up a couple points, two in fact, and calls the jam. Very quick jam right there as Black Senior Corner was just a few steps behind. Uh, uh, classic hit and quit from V Diva to put Philly on the board first. Your vantage point 
the scoreboard's only showing one, so it's only able to pick up one of that one. So the uh, score currently now is 1 0 for Philadelphia Liberty Bells. Well, boy, I sure hope that scoreboard is correct and my eyes are not. <laughs> no, it looks like he's saying two. He is, uh, yes, okay. my eyes are correct. <laughs> Boom, no glasses needed, folks. <laughs> But Philly, Philly it, doubles their lead. Yeah, <laughs> and just like that, the lead has been doubled. <laughs> I love roller derby. Really, really a harsh scrum start right here. That's a J.K. Rowling, I believe, is deming for Rose City. And for Philly, that is Eileen. You scream. I believe that's number 81. Lee Jammer is going to go, however, to the wheels of justice. And I don't mean your wheels, Justice. <laughs> Different wheels altogether. Oh, I'm sorry. That's tough line, Donna. Duh. 85. <laughs> I saw the eight in a shiny line. Entering the pack first, though, is Rose City Jammer uh, J.K. Rowling. She gets a nice push from her teammate, but she's going to call the jam immediately because Teflon Donna was already pretty close. I really think she could have gone for a few more points, but then again, you always want to play it safe, right, Justice? Absolutely. L looking over this uh, Wheels of Justice roster, it doesn't appear that uh, White Flight has made it this weekend. So both White Flight and uh, Scald Eagle, who was injured at ECDX, both out. So Rose City down two of their best jammers. They... But on the line for Philly is one of their best jammers, again, that is 1818 V Diva. I, I, I would like to apologize, I hadn't taken a look at this roster uh, previously. It looks like Sulfuric Acid also not here for Rose City. So Rose City down pretty much their main jammer rotation. So you might see some new players from Rose City right now, but right now, lead jammer is going to go to Philadelphia. Yeah, and Joyride 360 for. Um, for Portland is having a little bit of a hard time getting past that front wall of blue. She only has one blocker left to go. She gets runner on the outside, but V Diva is already right behind her, ready to pick up that jammer lap point. Let's see if she can do it. Yes, she's going to get past. V Diva is so fast, she's not even hesitating to call it or anything. She's just going to keep on going. You know, see, their boxes are empty, and Philly right here is probably going to want to get out of the back and give V Diva a chance to uh, pick up a quick point before hitting quit as she is lead jammer. And she's going to come up and think about it, and she's going to call it off and see what happens at the end there. Right as Olivia Face slams Joyride to the ground. Now, nice work by Kickassity. She did a great job of kind of peeling off some of that Philly mm -hmm. defense to slow them down so that they could not run to the front of the pack, as you were suggesting. It looks like V Diva's gamble did not work out. I think that Rose got one point against zero on that pass, and that will tie the game at 4-4. Four to four. Very low scoring so far as the all 10 roller girls are packed within half a foot of space at the jam line. So I actually want to talk about this for a second. I had not realized before uh, looking at the roster here that it's no sulfuric acid, no scald eagle because of the injury, and no white flight. So we're probably going to see a very, very, very different Rose City jammer rotation than we have seen previously this year. And this is either good or bad for Rose City to have that happen because that kind of means they're going to be showing all their cards of mm -hmm. their very deep bench mm -hmm. because three of their key skaters, three of their key uh, jammers are not in the building today. Scores been updated to uh, Philly 7, Rose City 4, so Philly's still in the lead. Um, uh, if, if you're going to play a game without uh, your key jammers, probably at this point in the season is the best to do so. It's not going to affect rankings because exactly. they're already set for the playoffs. We are back in action now. And it looks like 17H, the blast unicorn, just blasted right up the inside. She may be the last unicorn, but she's the first jammer out to pick up lead jammer status. About half a track behind is Teflon down for Philly, but in scoring position now is the blast unicorn coming up against a big wall of blue. She gets out of bounds effectively. Yeah, she gets forced out by number uh, eight. That is Mo Payne. She's going to call that jam. Looks like they I'm were. I'm sorry, that was actually Castro 06. Looks like they were able, or Philly was able to get out of that without any damage. So I think it's still seven to four favoring Philly. Yes, it is still 7-4 to four Philadelphia. About uh, 25 minutes to go in this first half, so still very early in the game. And once again, a very, very tight scrum start at the jammer line. Looking to see who we have out here. I think that is J.K. Rowling again for Rose City. And that is Mo Payne, the aforementioned Mo Payne. I do apologize. <laughs> I haven't mistaken her for Castro or Castro for her in years, but I just did it today. It is a little early for me today, folks. Yeah, last night was a good night. And yes. here we Every go around night. the Every outside. Every night is a good night at RollerCon. <laughs> J.K. Rowling again forced to the outside, has to slow down and wait to uh, re-enter. Each team having one blocker in the box. Olivia Face just went to the penalty box. Castro... 
excuse me, I just did it again. Mo Payne <laughs> is at the back of the pack oh, trying to fight, but she's going to the penalty box, Justice, for a cutting the track major. First, oh. first power jam of the game goes to Rose Three's advantage. Can J.K. Rowling take advantage here? Tries to go outside and cuts to the inside. Is lead jammer after about 45 seconds of fighting. She uh, does recognize that the other jammer's in the box, and now she's going to be able to try and put some points up and get Rose City in the lead here. They're behind by three, so one clean pass here will put Rose City back in the lead. Yeah, Coppertop did a great job of holding her back, but there she is already at the back of the pack, the Blast Unicorn ready to go. I see Rose I'm sorry, J.K. Rowling. Ro Rose, Rose City here playing some offense in the power jam situation. Let's see what works out for them. They, have man they managed to get heavy flow in the back here, but nice blocking in the front of the pack is going to keep J.K. Rowling in... Just one to beat is a Philly pivot. She gets around and calls it off. Yeah, Eileen, you scream, was doing a great job of slowing her down, but she couldn't stop her, and she couldn't quite tap her into the infield. J.K. Rowling did a nice little swivel around her and called the jam to pick up those points. We do have a lead change for the first time today, but certainly not the last, Justice. Absolutely. Seven on the board for Philly and eight for Rose City. So it's only a one-point game, but, geez, it is one point is all it takes to win. What I've been seeing very well this weekend so far is that there seems to be a, a mild change from completely passive offense on power jams for the, the teams actually trying to engage once the jammer hits the pack. I don't, know, I don't know whether that is a strategic or a Las Vegas <laughs> decision. Yeah, but, and that's but, uh, exactly right. I was talking to my roommate, uh, Jukebox and Alligator and Rebel Rocket. We were sitting around having this conversation mm -hmm. about are people playing like this because this is the new style or are they playing like this because this is Las Vegas? Exactly, exactly. Shanita Stretcher putting the hurt on the jammer for Rose City. Oh, nice. Forces her right into there. a 360. He's starting to do a stare down block. She's going to have to let her go because she is out of play. Lee Jammer is going to go to Rose City. Still stuck in the pack is Philly's Mo Payne coming out of the box. And one to beat. I think it's Mercy. Oh, and, it's, and Mo, Mercy Mo Payne indeed. knocked down. And a major trip is being given to a Rose City blocker. That's going to be number 28, Minstrel Psycho. And it looks like Olivia Face is also going to the penalty box, holding her face. Rose City will call it off with, hard to tell from her, I think that was three. I'll have to wait for the uh, score update there. But they will uh, keep their lead here and increase it a little bit. Yeah, three, oh, I'm sorry, four points. 12 to seven, Rose City, after about eight minutes in this game. Once again, uh, Philly setting up that wall right, so at the go, uh, jammer line. Now, you guys watching at home, I just have to point out, this has been the best roller con I have been new. And I know we say it every year, but that's because it keeps getting <laughs> yes, better and all, better and better. <laughs> it is always an accurate statement. From somebody that was at the very first roller con to now, I cannot yeah, even believe like believe the progression. It is fantastic. Just yeah. like the rapid growth of our sport, that's roller con itself has grown so large. Back to the action on the track. We have a jammer from Rose City getting lead jammer. That is Blast that's Unicorner. Really cool. V Diva is stuck in the pack right now uh, behind uh, I think Mel Mangles, is unable to push out of bounds. B oh, oh beautiful giant. Apex jump. I'm going to call that a gallop <laughs> from the Blast Unicorn, an oh. Apex gallop. The crowd loved that. How could you not? That was beautiful. Big wow. Apex jump is going to give Rose City four points in one leap. 16. So majestic, the Blast <laughs> <Yeah>. Unicorn. <laughs> oh. 16 to 7. Unicorn is jumping the Apex. So we got about a nine minutes into this first half. Rose City with a small lead, 16 to 7. Oh, wow, and, and already we're on the OTO checking out the shoulder pads, shall we? <laughs> Looks like Rob Lobster is looking for an illegal procedure call. Not quite sure why. I had the pleasure of coaching Rob Lobster quite a bit this week. Um, we were supposed to skate on teams together. Unfortunately, go figure, I have an injury. And so I uh, decided to step up and coach. And Rob, I got to say, I was surprised. I was a little worried about coaching such an intense coach as a skater. Right, right. And he was so agreeable, I was shocked. I mean, I know he's a wonderful guy off skates and all, but he really, really, really was a team player on the bench. So kudos to Rob Lobster. And Portland's men roller derby is pretty damn lucky to have a strong skater and a strong leader like that on the track. Yeah, one of the things I've really loved about RollerCon, especially this year, but in, in previous years, is seeing so many bench coaches of a top-level team. you got Rob Lobster from uh, Rose City, uh, Magnum PMMP from Arch Rival, the Rev from Montreal, all out here playing and actually playing the same game that you know the people that they're working with every day for their all-star teams are trying to make it to championships are also playing. It's like seeing them be able to interact with them on that level. It's just, it's just really good for everybody, I really think. Yeah, and I got to say, that's part of the reason why they are such good bench coaches mm -hmm. is because they themselves literally get into the game, right. not just mentally, not just with a clipboard 
or some flashy, you know, sign sign language that they throw to the team right. while they're on the track. They are literally getting in the game and playing yes. the game themselves. So Absolutely. if you want to be a strong bench coach, I highly recommend <laughs> Learning how to play dirty strap, strap from within skates. the pack. Yeah. Take some hits. Exactly. <laughs> Take some hits, y'all. It's a fun time. So the, the referees are continuing to discuss something that is apparently quite controversial. Um, <laughs> perhaps it's the scent of whiskey coming from my microphone. I am not. I don't even drink whiskey. And I'm like, why is there Jack Daniels on this mic? Oh, wait. We are at RollerCon. It's a Saturday morning. And Friday night is usually a very active night at RollerCon. And here we're back in action. Looks like for Rose City, somebody who is obscured by a lot of blue right now. I'm going to go Mel Mangles. Thank you, Chip Queso, for the backup. Mel Mangles, the jamming, is usually a blocker for Rose City, as we were saying earlier. And she is lead jammer. Well, I'm sorry, she's not lead jammer. Out first, not lead jammer. Well, she's facing off against Teflon Donna, who is lead jammer. Teflon Donna is going to get out first. She sees Mel sizing her up. She's probably going to wait for a blocker standing in the box, see if she gets out. Exactly. Yeah. Good, Very good, good smart play. Kill. Smart play by Teflon Donna. She's out, and she will call Beautiful. it. Beautiful. And that yeah. is why That's Teflon Donna is one of the greatest skaters in Derby Nation. Super aware jamming right there. Most, like you, Usually your first reaction is, oh, the other person's ahead of me, let me call it off. But she looked to make sure what the pack situation was, waited until the ideal moment to call it off. And, you know, I always call the lead jammer the get-out-of-jail-free card of roller derby, and that <laughs> is a perfect example. Like, that blocker was stuck in the penalty box. Nope, nope, I'm going to wait till she's out and then call it. Nice work, Teflon Donna. So we're saying uh, Mel Mangles, I think that was our first jam of the night for Rose City. As we were saying previously, Rose City down their almost the entire jam rotation, and they're gonna, probably going to see some new jammers for Rose tonight, or this morning. But it is good that Rose does have utility jammers oh, that absolutely. they can turn to, like absolutely. Mel Mangles, who are such smart pack players. You know, she jams through the pack like a blocker playing offense. So. And, and working out for them so far as they lead 16-7 to 7 with about 10 minutes left, but this lead jammer goes to V Diva for Philadelphia. Yeah, Mercy tried to put the hurt on her and take her to the outside, but V Diva just slithered right around the tall wall wall of women known as Mercy. Not too far behind is Jory Wright. I think that she's a transfer from Lava City, if I recall my derby history correctly. V ah. Diva is in the pack and trying to school knocks down number 11, Kickassity. I think she will get her point, and I think that's her only point as she gets past the Kickassity for one, making the score now 16 to 8, favoring Rose City. And if you guys are hearing whistle bleed over, of course, that is from the full track of action that's going on right next door to us. There are two tracks going on with challenges at all times. How is RollerCon <laughs> not the most amazing thing ever? You explain it to me. I dare you. But I do want to tell you that the Blast Unicorn is jamming for um, Rose City. But it looks like out first we're going to have a lead jammer in blue. That looks like Teflon Donna once again. Yeah, nice attempt by Scarfico Lucky to hold it in front of the pack, but could not quite do it. And now Teflon Donna in scoring position. She passes Brady Punch for the first or first two points. This is one blocker in the box. And Tef will call it off with, I think, all four. Let's wait and see. Scoreboard update. Like, once again, we apologize that we're in a position where it's a little bit hard to see the referee uh, points being held up afterwards. Yeah, Julius Pleaser's fingers kind of disappear into the awesomeness of RollerCon. We apologize. <laughs> So as we, can, as we, we can tell you that there is about 18 minutes left. Look like we have a couple points added. 12 on the board for Philly, 16 for Rose City. And if you're hearing whistles, again, that is from the other track. There are no timeouts being called or anything like that. So that's a one, a one pass game right now. Four points separate the teams at a 16 to 12 with 17 minutes and 45 seconds left in this first half of Rose City versus Philadelphia. Here's a V Diva gets a lead jammer without breaking pack and she is now out of the pack and she's got some space to run knocks off a Rose City blocker and now uh, oh it's going to be a power jam for Philadelphia as on her way to the box is Joy Ride 360 so let's see what let's see how Philadelphia handles this Philly's going to set up at the back Rose City now has got a wall in the front and they're going to need to bridge this out successfully oh they're going to they're going to do a little uh, sausage routine as the ladies in Sweden call it. So Philly not going to offense. Bro City trying to bridge it out. V Diva powers her way through. In a situation where you need a jammer to actually physically bang her way through, V Diva is going to be one of the best in the business at that one. Here comes V Diva again, second scoring pass. Has already got five. Goes to the middle once again. Philadelphia now trying to hold one. 
And she's through again. 10-0 so far for V Diva. Puts Philadelphia back in the lead and trying to add some more. Right now, 21-16. I'm sorry, 22-16. And now B Devo goes up against a very, very slow Rose City wall. Rose City, oh, and around the outside, B Devo is going to put some more on the board. Philadelphia content to just sit back and watch it happen because B Devo makes it happen. And the Philly offense, now the pack very close. Once again, Rose City is going to have to try and bridge here. It's uh, J.K. Rowling has a back position. And once again, B Devo through, puts the, puts the score and ices the Rose City jammer in the box. Big jam for Philadelphia. Yeah, Let's uh, yeah. wait for that score update. Huge jam for Philadelphia, widening that gap. It's a very close game thus far, but that was a very, very big jam for them. Phil yes, yeah, Phil Philly was down 16-12, uh, uh, so that was a 20-0 jam for B Diva. Biggest jam of the game is going to put Philadelphia up by exactly double Rose City's score at 32-16. to we got uh, almost about a quarter into this game with 15 minutes and 37 seconds on the clock as this jam, this jam 12 starts here. Teflon Donna from Team USA jamming for uh, Philly Roller Girls here. Coming out of the box is Joyride, but lead jammer is Teflon Donna, and she is off the races as Joyride having some trouble here behind a wall of blue and black. Oh, nice turnaround and stop right there. And the front packer Philly. Oh, beautiful, beautiful blocking right there by Sheena Stretcher. I think she's trying to trying to pull a track cut. Asks the referee for one, does not get it. But very effective work right there. Teflon Don will be able to get through with a four, I think. And call it. Let's see if that was four or five. I'm pretty sure that she didn't lap her. And yeah, that was four. Yeah, that was four. Good call, Justice. Your glasses are perfect. <laughs> So now a 30-point lead for, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a 20-point lead. Okay, uh, your glasses are perfect, but your math <laughs> is not. <laughs> it's early in Las Vegas. That's very we, true. We, we, we call 12.30 early here. We call 12.30 early everywhere. <laughs> so Kit Cassidy is, is one of the blockers out of the pack, as is Frankenherder for Rose City. But outside of the pack first is going to be... I believe that's Goldie. I, I'm not quite sure if we've seen her jam yet, Justice. Yeah, I think this. I don't, I'm not sure that she was here on Friday. I, I don't remember calling call, or seeing her in the previous game against Rocky last night. Man, she is through, and that's a pretty fast five points. So she has lapped Rose City's jammer. Oh, and a, another major is called on Rose City. That is the blast unicorn on our way to the box. You know, and good news for Philadelphia right now. Yeah, it is very bad news for the Rose City Rollers fans at home. They are going to have to stay out of the box, mm -hmm. bottom line. And through for five more. That is Goldie. Uh, Philly looking to put up a big lead here after that 20-0 down, put him in the lead the first time. Now suddenly, in the driver's seat, Goldie pulls up to a big wall of white and purple right now as Philly is just going to stand there and try and get that pack split. Once again, Rose City goes to the bridge. But I, uh, we were saying previously that uh, we were seeing a lot of more offense during Power Jam. We've also been seeing this very effective bridging when they're not playing, when the other team is not playing offense. And right now, you're going to see it again. The, uh, the, the rearmost Rose City blocker will go to the bridge once they reach that 10 foot mark and they're shooting it again. And right now, it's giving, it was giving Goldie some trouble, but she is through again. It may slow her down, but it's not going to stop her. And now Philly up 55 to 16 early. Well, it's not going to stop her, but I got to say, this has got to stop. <laughs> I'm just going to say point blank, please play roller derby, you guys. There's nothing that infuriates me more, which is why I'm not even talking, <laughs> is because, I mean, I get it. I get yeah. you want points, but just play the damn game. It's infuriating, but right now it is putting points up on Sorry. that board. No, it, it is. I, I, I agree with you. But right now, oh, another, another penalty to Rose City's jammer, and suddenly... Two jams ago, Philly was behind, and now on the power jam and the patient offense from Philly, suddenly up 60 to 16. Two jams ago, they were down by four points, and now it's a huge lead for Philly. And Rose City in huge penalty trouble right now, and the crowd not really feeling that, uh, that turn of events for Rose City. Yeah, I know. I mean, that, that is a bummer. And everybody loves an underdog. But, you know, Philly's playing smart derby. Yes. It's yes, not my preferred exactly. derby, and I apologize for losing my cool. <laughs> I have been working 14-hour days here at RollerCon. <laughs> but they are playing smart derby. They are playing to the rules, and they are playing very strategic. Yes. 
I, 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 I absolutely agree with you that I prefer to watch engagement in offense, but you can't deny that it has been effective oh, right there by the score. I would never Six, deny yeah, that. I mean, that's, that's a given. Look at the, yeah. how that scoreboard is just absolutely blown up. Yeah. But I know that Rose City does like to play fast and hard. So you know what? We're we're 12 minutes away from the half, Justice. Perhaps they're going to go in and retool their their gameplay. And it's unfortunate because you always want to make your opposition play your na your game, not vice versa. Right. But when it's this big of a, a gap, sometimes you got to go. What are they doing? How can we do that too? I, I'm not sure if we're in an OTO or a team timeout here. I think it's OTO because I, I don't see this, the uh, It is timeout. an OTO because okay. if you look at the lovely jam timer, ah. she is holding her shoulder pads. And she's wearing that lovely pink. pink. <laughs> so it, this, is, this, is, this is tough. You, you, as I was saying yesterday against the Rocky Mountain, you don't want to take away anything from the team that is winning by a lot. But uh, it seems that in both last night's game against uh, Rocky Mountain and at least in the last two dance here, against Rose City, Philly has gotten a little bit lucky in one sense in that there's been serious penalty troubles by the other team that has really helped Philly to raise the score. I, once again, you don't want to take it away the fact that they have managed to put up 60 against right now oh, yeah. with the, uh, the unofficial number two team in the nation. That's uh, no, no mean feat. But at the same time, uh, Rose City, if they can keep the jammer out of the box, probably would not be down by the amount of points they are right now because those two jams really changed the complexion of this game so far. Well, you know, as upset as I get about people not rolling in roller derby, <laughs> I get more upset when I see a jammer going to the box time and time again. And that really has been the biggest thorn in the side of Rose City's Cadillac is that, you know, you're, right. you got to keep your jammer out of the box, yeah. bottom line. Yeah. And when your jammer's sitting in the sin bin, Philly has every right to just say, all right, then, we're going to do this to you. Exactly. You committed so many penalties, you don't feel like playing derby? Neither do we. Check it out. <laughs> And there, there's no, nothing worse than back-to-back -back jammer penalties on the same jammer. Exactly. This, this makes her more tired and more likely to get another penalty on the way back. And so. I mean, every time, and you know this from experience, every time you go to the penalty box, it really does cloud your gameplay because mm -hmm. you're thinking about why am I here, right, what did I do? Right. You're, blaming, you're blaming yourself on the target. Exactly. Hard. And right now, Rose City, we're back in action. Rose City trying to bridge it out. Mo Payne is trying to fight through, trying to tiptoe through the tulips, but Mercy is not letting it happen. They're right at 19.9 feet, and finally... Forced to go. Yeah. Lead jammer is going to go to Mo Payne, and, Ro and Rose City runs back. Tries a reset. Oh, big hit! As Rose City is number 81, ha having a good time, tried to get behind the Philly wall and was denied. Didn't see put that hit on. It was very effective. Now Mo Payne with five so far, adding to that Philly lead as Rose City, whose box is completely full, including the jammer, around the outside. Mo Payne, five more points. Really tough series of jams right near for Rose City. And then there's another blocker. Now Rose City down just one on three in the pack. And she was called off at a location that had to make it go all the way around the track before getting to the box and getting waved off. So the absolute worst location on the track to lose your blocker right there. And Mo Payne is going to get through again. Oh, my. This is a huge, huge point swing in just three jams. As we were saying, if you're just joining us, it looks like Philly is killing Rose City, and they are, but it has been basically three power jams in a row that have put Philly up by a huge amount. Just three jams ago, the score was 16 to 12. Now it is 80 to 16 as Rose City's jammer were just stuck in the box, and with two more blocks in the box, it's going to see Philly's jammer go through and through and through. This game has changed a huge deal in, in just three jams. Yeah, it's surprising because coming out, you know, coming out of the game, uh, out of the gate, it looked like a very, very heated, tight matchup. We were having a couple lead changes, and Philly is just dominating this first mm -hmm. half. And you know, the thing is, I'm not in any way, shape, or form knocking Philly for right. their game for their strategy because they also have every other kind of gameplay in their toolbox. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if Rose City can figure out how to dismantle that stop and roll, stop no roll, I should say. <laughs> Philly's going to shut them down in different ways. Philly is a very, very, very diverse team. Well, the, the thing is, Ro Rose City, as Rocky was last night, effective at the bridging, but if you only have two blockers on the track, it's way, way harder to bridge. Yeah, bridging pretty much is uh, <laughs> Yeah, you've got one luck. blocker and one person holding that pack. Back in action right now, it's uh, Philadelphia still with a uh, 3-3 pack. Lead jammer, though, Teflon Donna. Yeah, Teflon Donna just scooping right around number 81. That's Havana having a good time. That's uh, J.K. Rowling out there for Rose City right now. Heavy flow getting in between the wall of blue and wall of white. J.K. Rowling out of the pack now. Here comes Tef around the outside. Down goes a Portland blocker. Up the middle goes Teflon Donna. She's yep. waiting, 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 because you know what? Why not eat up some clock time? you got a nice, sizable lead going into the half. Why waste all your energy? Conserve some of that. Yeah, it looks like what happened there, she was unsure whether or not her blocker was going to be able to get out before 
uh, Rose City enters. So she did kill some time and uh, did keep Rose City off the board, but both or all three blockers, two for Rose and one for Philly, remain in the box during that during that penalty kill. But Philadelphia are really killing it right now. As we we're just saying, this game has turned around completely in just a few jams. 88 to 16 after a score of 16-12 Rose City four jams ago. And it's power jam action for Philadelphia as we really ballooned their score right now. 21 is the number on the back of Untamed Shrew. I don't believe that we said that name quite yet. New jammer for Rose City. She's getting stopped behind that blue wall and around the outside is a new transplant but an old favorite, V Diva. 18, 18 is lead jammer. Not too far behind is the Untamed Shrew. We get about 20 feet. Man, to keep up so far with B Diva who's got the long legs and the fast strides. It's gonna be hard to catch up with her. Let's see if B Diva is able to score some points before. And she will choose to call that one at 0 0. But hey, when you're winning by 88 to 16, 0 0 is totally fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 0 0 is A OK, my friend. <laughs> Once again, Philly taking that uh, jammer line. Spence looks like trying to see uh, the penalty box situation here. Three, three out there for Rose, one blocker in the box. Philly's penalty box is empty, so they have all four blockers out there. Yeah, Mercy is wearing the stripe for uh, Rose, and I believe that is Mel Mangles quite right next to her, and 17, 8, 17 19, Celia Devour. That makes up your pack for Rose. See, uh, Mercy's holding the front of the pack pretty effectively here. Yeah, Goldie is trying to find a way. Having a little bit of a hard time behind that white wall. Here comes a blast unicorn. Goldie fighting against one blocker. There she is. Lee Jammer goes to the blast unicorn for Rose. A much needed Lee Jammer status there as Rose City has not scored in, I want to say, about five, six minutes here. And I think that blast unicorn here is going to be able to pick some off as we have Philly Jammer still stuck in the pack. Trying to get a grand slam point here if she can. Here entering for points. Knocked out very effectively by, I want to say, heavy flow. Hard to tell from me. Oh, uh, 527? Yeah, that's heavy, heavy flow. Heavy flow, right the first time. <laughs> sure Don't doubt myself. yourself, my love. <laughs> and yeah, he, out there also is Eileen, you scream, and number 29, Copper Top. Very different than heavy flow. Last Unicorn is able to get through, and I think that'll be four. We're going to say four points. Yep. Yep, four points. Four points for Rose City, their first points in a while. So they are in a big hole that uh, they that was created by power to situations. It is uh, 88 to 20 right now, favoring Philadelphia. And they're going to have to keep this focus and this intensity up. Whoa, wait a minute. I'm going to stop babbling. Look at what we're doing here today, Justice. There are people occupying the pivot line. Occupy the pivot line, <laughs> Sin City Skates. Uh. That's a Sin City Skates pivot line, and it literally says occupy the pivot line on it. <laughs> so Philly gets the back wall, Rose City really close in the front, and now the uh, It looks like Teflon Donna is getting uh, eaten alive, but she fights through every second. Look at her go. She's got one blocker, Kick Cassidy, but out of the pack first. That is a new new jammer. Uh, JK, I'm sorry, that's not a new jammer. That is J.K. Rowling. Hello. Nice chest to chest block from Kikassi was able to keep Philly's uh, jammer and Teflon down the pack right there. Oh, and we're going to see J.K. Rowling has to reset. But she is now currently scoring points as Teflon down is still stuck. I don't know if she's able to get the lap point so far, but both jammers in the pack. Teflon now. Oh, Teflon gets called lead jammer. Yep, Teflon Donna gets lead jammer. She signals to her bench. Should I keep going? I agree with her. Yeah. She's already all the way through the exactly. pack. You might as well go for at least one or two. Yeah. Your lead jammer, pick up a couple points, and then you call it. Absolutely. Once again, very smart aware jamming from Teflon Donna. Now she will be able to try and cut something off of that. Spins around, calls it off, waiting to see. Now, while I do agree that she's a very smart jammer, I'm going to give that to her bench coaches because mm -hmm. she looked to her bench, so mm -hmm. kudos to her. Always always check back in with your bench. That is why they are there. Her bench coaches said, no, you know what? Go and grab a couple, then you call it. Nice work, bench team. Now 91 for Philadelphia and 25 for Rose City cutting into the last five minutes of this first half. So it looks like... Sorry, once again, the whistle of confusion. That was the other whistles and not these whistles. So we are now in action. The game is off. You couldn't tell, though. <laughs> Looks like a Untamed Shrew is back on the line for Rose City. 
And V Diva's back out there for Philly. Wow. Oh, v Diva took a sit for a second on the rear end of Mel Mangles and said, Nep, I'm out of here. Did a 360. Beautiful, beautiful. Lee Jammer status for Philly once again. So here comes B Diva wow. on one skate. Thinks about it, waiting. She's going to wait and try and get her blocker out. Waits for it, waits for it, calls it off. Oh, was it in time, though? I don't think it was. I think that it, Rose City might have stolen some points right yeah, there. Yeah, a couple points right yeah. there, actually. Not just one, yep. but two. There it is. You know, I think V Diva is going to have to change her name to Wow because I'm going to say that <laughs> so much every time she's on the track. I'm just not going to call her V Diva. <laughs> I'm just going to call her Wow. Philadelphia was a big, big lead right now, built on a, a three jam series of power jams. Yeah, that's 27 on the board for Rose City, 95 for Philly. Three minutes and 32 seconds left to go, Justice. Looks like a, once again, Rose City has two in the box. And that's a team timeout charge to the bench of Rose City Roller Girls from Portland, Oregon. The ladies in white and purple. So if you're just joining us um, and you're looking at the score and you're like, wow. Philadelphia 95, Rose City 27. As we were saying earlier tonight, we do not want to take anything away from Billy because they are beating a very good team by a lot of points. Yes. On the same on the same level, we do want to mention tonight, Rose City, uh, Scald Eagle has been injured for uh, is an ACDX. White Flight, not in Vegas, and Sulfuric Acid, not in Vegas. We have been seeing a demo rotation for Wilson Dusses of Blast Unicorn, Untamed Shrew, and J.K. Rowling, and uh, Joyride as well. And Mel Mangles, I think, also stepped in. And fine jammers in their own right, but it's really it, 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 it's it's hard to add an entirely new jammer rotation. If you're missing one or two, and you and you have to move in m maybe a jammer who is not often your main line, it's one thing. But uh, Rose City right now, not having any of the their top three jammers, having a hard time, and also their penalty situation has also been damaging them. Again. You don't want to take anything from Philly, but uh, Rose City definitely not showing the same roster that you would expect them to bring to, to regionals this year. Right now it's Blast Unicorn out there for Rose City. It is forced back by some effective uh, defense there. Yeah, by Shanita Stretcher. Stretcher. Again, this two wall of Shanita Stretcher, and I believe that's Mo Payne. Uh, and once again, Rose City in only one blocker on the floor as Mercy has called out in the exact worst location for a blocker to be called out on a two on a two person pack right there. Not only that, but her, her teammate is standing, so yeah, there's gonna be an open seat for her to sit. Now she's back out on the track. A blocker from Rose returns to the track. Can't see who it is, I apologize. Mo Payne gets out, calls a jam. And Philadelphia will increase their lead. Now knocking the door of 100 points here. Let's see what happens after that score update. If there is a score update. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a team timeout's gonna be charged to the bench of the ladies in blue, the uh, Philadelphia Liberty Bells. They are the Philly Roller Girls. They are the points, and in fact, they are one point away from 100, 99 they, to 27. They also apparently are Philly. <laughs> they, they are Philly. They are Philly. <laughs> Roller Girls. I gotta say, you know, one of the one of the oldest teams in the WFTDA right there, mm -hmm. the Philly Roller Girls. They are such an impressive team to watch, and you know, I I definitely don't want anybody to think that I'm in any way taking anything from their gameplay by what I said earlier. Again, I I apologize. I was just very frustrated because <laughs> I just love roller derby, and you know what? Philly plays some of the hardest, fastest roller derby out there, and I love when they do it. When Shanita Stretcher destroys somebody's soul <laughs> by popping them into the infield. Split second swivel on her toe stops, going all the way back to the point where she is not out of play but can suck that jimmer back. Mm -hmm. That makes me want to have her derby babies over <laughs> and over and over. And when Teflon Donna lives up to her name and just has blockers slide right off her back, holy shnikes, do my toes curl with anticipation of her next move. That is a non-stick surface right there. So I just want to give a lot of props to Philly. I'm not in any way, please do not think I'm saying I'm not in love with you because we all know I am. <laughs> But no, absolutely you're right. Uh, one of the things we've been talking about a lot this weekend, if you had uh, seen uh, Jukebox's video on YouTube, and that was posted I gotta a few say days that's ago. part of it. Yeah, she, exactly. She's my roller con roommate, and so she came home and said, Val, I was talking, I was doing an interview and, and that I thought was gonna be out in December or November, and some guy said, Do you have anything else to say? And she was like, Actually, I do. And she just yeah. kind of went off and spoke from the heart. And so maybe that's yeah. why I got so riled up. So yeah. I do apologize. No, but no, no. That, that, that really took off. It, it, was, it was clear. When, that was posted about two days ago. And I think it's about like, something like 4,000 views right now. So clearly. I heard 6,000. 6,000 views. So clearly that, that, that uh, struck a chord with people. And it, it's important to, to hear that from a top skater for a top yes. league. Yes. You know, 
So it, 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 it's one thing when you have numerous people saying it, but when you see somebody of that level expressing the same opinion. And she will not do it. Yeah. She and I were discussing yeah. that she was skating in various challenge bouts, and people were saying, come on. She said, no, I will not play like that. And I was, you know, I was telling my skaters the same thing when I was bench coaching. Do not do that. Mm -hmm. Play derby. Mm -hmm. Have fun. Back, back in action right now, we've got uh, some Philly blockers going to the box. Lead, oh, another power jam for Philadelphia. Oh, man, JK, JK rolling, rolling. rolling her way to the penalty box. Mercy is sitting in there. So we got a white wall at the top of the pack trying to hold back V Diva. V Diva taking some serious hits and going goony arms. What just <laughs> happened there? Philadelphia is going to that, uh, that no engagement offense, and V Diva did not realize that the Rose City Jam was in the box yeah, and she called just it off her, too fast. She just held her hands up in yeah. frustration, yeah. realizing her mistake. But you know what? At the same time, calling it off, that feels like a bummer. But guess what? You put out Teflon Donna, you're still in the win because right. you have a power jam situation. So really, it's not that big yeah. of a deal. Also, Philadelphia does not need to come back. Yeah, they do not <laughs> need to come back. And also, we need to check that scoreboard. About a minute and 18 seconds left. 22 for Rose City, 99 for Philly. So, V Diva, give yourself yeah. a break for once. <laughs> you don't have to be everyone's hero for that jam. You are okay, girl. This jam is probably going to start with about a minute five left on the period clock, so this may or may not be a last jam. Oh, well, someone, I saw a timeout there. <laughs> OTO right now. Yep, shoulder pads. Yep. Just doing a shoulder pads check. I got to say, I was bench coaching a uh, team earlier, and I was getting so feverish about that the refs had to call an OTO because we have such limited time to play here at RollerCon because mm -hmm. we want the WFTDA games to get back on track. Speaking mm -hmm. of, we'll get back to the action on the track. Yeah. Referee timeout has ended, and oh, BD was back on the track. It looks like Teflon Down is going to take over for her. Why wouldn't you? Exactly. I mean. <laughs> she wants it back. She's going to try and power her on the outside. B Diva wow. so strong, able to just push her way around the uh, Rose City blocker there. Unfortunately, I can't tell who that was. It, it looks like she borrowed some of uh, Teflon's Teflon. <laughs> she just peeled those blockers right off her. And now uh, Philadelphia going to active offense as they try and suck back a Rose City blocker. B Diva through for five. And the white wall is forming up together. Number 66, Brady Punch with Mercy and 1719, Celia Devour. This is a 3 2 pack, favors Rose City, but Philadelphia's going to once again go to that no engagement offense. Works out again as Rose City has to bridge and Mercy loses her. More points for Philadelphia. They are now over 100 points, and they're going to close out this half on a big, big jam, looks like. And here comes Shanita Stretcher with the cutest re-entry into a pack I have ever seen. <laughs> Skated backwards, topped on the toe stops, and back on the track. Here comes J.K. Rowling now back on the track as Rose City Jammer, and she's seen nothing but blue and black all over her. Down goes Mercy. B. Diva jumps right over her. It completely was a legal block. Mercy was backwards, so V Diva blocked her in the chest. Yeah, completely v legal block. V Diva hidden Mercy is like a, a... A dream come true <laughs> for all of us Derby fans. But then wait and see the vengeance that Mercy right? has upon Dean Viva, V Diva, and that's going to be another dream come true. Continents colliding right there. Oh, man. V Diva now is going to slow down and try and be try and get through here cleanly. Beautiful. She she JK Rowling got real low and snuck underneath everybody's arms. And here is that vengeance I was talking about. Speaking of beautiful, <laughs> Mercy just ruining, ruining, ruining V Diva's day. Slowing her down so the entire white wall joined Mercy in front of V Diva and sucked themselves in front of Diva to call the jam. So that's going to end the half with Philadelphia on the driver's seat and their foot on the gas. 100, uh, the score update right now, 100 and... 18 for Philly, only 27 for Rose City. So once, once again, if you're joining us, this score is highly unexpected. Again, completely unexpected. Uh, again, we want to say Philadelphia playing an excellent game when, when blocking and dang very well. But one thing that is very, very clear here: Rose City suffering from two problems. Number one, huge penalty issues. Number two, uh, their A demo rotation is out. No white flight, no sulfuric acid, and the injured Scald Eagle all not here. So again, you don't want to take anything away from the, the dangers who have been going for Rose City: uh, Dory Ride, J.K. Rowling, Blast Unicorn, Untamed Shrew and uh, one look from Mel Mangles. But previously in this year, Rose City has not used them primarily in, uh, in, 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 in Wolf to Games. So having a little hard time adjusting here. Right now we've got a 14 minutes left in halftime. Once again, the score is 118 for Philly, 27 for Rose City. My name is Justice Feelgood Marshall. My name is Val Capone. And we'll be back in about 10 minutes.
Mic check one, two. Okay, I think that we are back. About two minutes to the second half here as uh, Philadelphia is playing Rose City in the first game of three today at RollerCon. So right now, Philadelphia with a huge 118 to 27 lead over a Penley Heavy Rose City team. Also uh, lacking some key jammers here. It looks like we're just about ready to get back into the action. My name is Justice Bilgood Marshall, and I'm here with the lovely... Oh, Val Capone. When you said lovely, I thought you were talking about dump truck. <laughs> I was like, that guy's by the pool. Don't sell yourself short, Val Capone. You I am are not short. Doll. I am five nine and a half. <laughs> although I'm too short to skate in the Amazons, apparently. Damn it! I'm half an inch shorter than their requirement. That's BS, my friends. Did, did they actually have a measuring stick yeah, to make sure that you could qualify do. for well, Amazons? I, the other day, I was at the doctor and they said I'm five nine and a half. I thought I was only five nine, so I took a picture of it. I posted it on Facebook in hopes that I could get rostered. <laughs> I was like, I'm almost there. And actually, Rebel Rocket told me that they decided that I could be allowed to skate. And then I tore my psoas, so I couldn't skate at RollerCon. So I finally got drafted by the Amazons, <laughs> and I couldn't skate. So she said, well, sorry, not next year. That was your one window of opportunity. Ouch. I was like, all right, then. You're sleeping on the floor next year. <laughs> well, you can just uh, do uh, stretches for a year, and you might get that, that extra half inch. I'm, I'm going to go to chiropractors every day <laughs> until I'm 5'10". Extend that spine. <laughs> extension. <laughs> Spinal extension. All right, so we got V Diva eighteen eighteen. I'm sorry, I mean, I meant Wow eighteen eighteen <laughs> is on the line, facing off against the Blast Unicorn seventeen H. So uh, once again, the Rusty has one more game tonight. They're going to be playing Denver at uh, seven p.m. They only have oh, one. Oh, our wife. Yeah, our, our wife. Uh, no seven seven p.m. So, sorry, I got thrown off by thinking about our wife. Thinking about Angela <laughs> Death and her beautiful badassery. They have one more game before regionals. They were playing Minnesota in late August. And again, and I feel like I'm repeating myself here, but we don't want to take away from Philly. However, no, Rose, City's, Rose City's roster right now I think is unlikely to be similar to the one that we will see against Minnesota and against uh, regional competition at Westerns. But I got to say, for Rob Lobster, you know, this is a good opportun opportunity to see what jammers that have been waiting in the wings, if you will, can do. Mm -hmm. Right. And what they need to retool. And, you know, this is not to take away from Rose City either. They are playing very well, but Philly is laying the hammer down. Jam, jam is off, or ha half has started. What and language are you speaking? <laughs> <laughs> this is English with words hey, different combinations. Hey, you're in two places at once. There is a gentleman walking down with your Great Lakes All-Star shirt. <laughs> and look at that. Speaking of great... We got the Blast Unicorn out first for Lee Jammer, but V Diva is stalking her down. Looks like uh, Rose is going to try and get out of the back here. The back of the pack is white. She's going to have to. She might have to call it off before she scores here. And oh, she gets one. Gets one. So nice job there. By uh, was that J.K. or was that Joyride? Sorry, I couldn't tell from here. Uh, the Jammer. Yes, Rose City's Jammer. That was Blast Unicorn. <laughs> wow, the one I didn't guess. You're pretty. <laughs> You're pretty in your know, sparkly, I, I, I Gloria good. Stefan shirt. I look good. I got nice abs. But whoa. I, but, I, but I can't recognize. <laughs> okay, people. I'm changing your name to Whoa. <laughs> so now 118 to tw against uh, 28 for Rose City, Philadelphia with a 90 point lead right now. And number 85, Teflon Donna in blue at the back of the pack, jamming for Philly, but at the front of the pack. We have two blockers. One of them is Shanita Stretcher. Goes down, stayed on one skate as long as she could. But we do have a lead jammer, and that is 934, J.K. Rowling. Second Not lead Joyride, row. but J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Second lead jammer in a row for Rose City. We have uh, Teflon Donna's out of the pack now. And Damage Doll and Shanita Stretcher made up a really nice two-all at the front. But, they, you know, J.K. Rowling just kept on rolling and had to push them so forward. She did get lead jammer. She just is trying to call the jam. The jam is going to get called. And See how many points. That's two points picked up by J.K. Rowling. Very, very, very slow comeback for Rose City, but they've got still half an hour to work with. One of the one of the, the odd things about the nature of the sport here is that what happens is because of the way the rankings tournaments work out, that everything from the end of June to the tournament starting in mid-September doesn't really count for rankings or or seeding at all. So at this point in the season, it is okay to lose this kind of game where you might not have your your a list out there and still get as you were saying the experience for the, the b line of gamers yeah th i mean that's exactly right you can't just rely on your a game all the time because case in point what happens when they're not available you have right. to exactly. you have to have people ready to step up and take on those roles themselves and be those leaders on the track and number 350 right now is out there i'm sorry 360 that's joyride mm -hmm. 
She's still stuck in the pack. We do have a lead jammer, and I believe it's Mo Payne of Philly, one of the very first Philly uh, roller girls that I met. It's a five points so far from Mo Payne, I think, here, if you got them all. She's going to try to eat the baby right now on Joyride. Right? Let's see if we can pull it off. She is looking hungry. Slowing it down, thinking about it, and going to lose her on the outside. Wow, Joyride Joy Ride going on a little, a little pirouette, if you will. Right around Mo Payne. Mo Payne's gonna say, "All right, I see how that is." Bam, call him the jam. Mo Payne concedes the attempt to eat the baby, but she had the upper hand and calls it off. Yeah, Mo Payne is one of the original Philly Roller Girls, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, Castro, Mo Payne, Shanita, um, Teflon, I believe. No, Teflon started with Carolina. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Whoa, whoa. Gotta check my history. <laughs> but yeah, we have a lot of skaters out there that have playing this, been playing this game for years and years, and. Just it shows on the track. Look at how ten together they are, how tight they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, Castro's have been out there for years. We also, have a, right now, a very new addition to Philadelphia in her first year for Philly V Diva, previously yes. on Lehigh Valley and Dutchland. Now Philly joining this year, and she is out with lead jammer for Philadelphia V Diva. Yeah, she's definitely an excellent pickup for the Philly program. She's also on Team USA, but jamming for. Portland's Rose City Rollers, that is number 21, Untamed Shrew. She jammed a little bit in the first half. I have a feeling we're going to see her a lot in the second. Diva's holding up three points. Let's see how many she actually picked up. Looks like uh, Rose did steal one there. So we're waiting for the score update. Both teams so far have taken one timeout, so two left for each. Rose City definitely going to need a massive turnaround in this half to be able to change this outcome. Right now, Philadelphia up by almost 100 points in the driver's seat, 126 to 31. Right now, uh, back in action is Blast Unicorn for Rose City and the Jammer for Philadelphia. It looks like that is Teflon Donna. Sliding right off the rear end of Kickassity. Nice work by Mercy and Kickassity making that wall in the back. And in the front, we have the Black Unicorn is out, but does not have lead due to a cut minor during that opening pass. But she might be able to get back before Teflon can break and score points here. Or me, oh, takedown by Mercy. Like, oh, I love Mercy. And so Black Unicorn will score some points here. Teflon gets out and calls it off but not before Rose City's last unicorn is able to pick up one point. And can I just say a personal thank you to Mercy um, for all of her hard work. Mercy has been one of Ivana's right-hand women here at RollerCon, and she has been running around and skating like a badass and doing everything, and she's logging all the volunteer hours and doing all the coordination, and that woman is insane. I'm convinced that she's actually a robot. <laughs> Um, Mer Mercy got an interesting history. She st started uh, down in Dallas. Yep. It was in Hawaii for yeah, a while. Yeah, I remember when she was in Dallas. She scared the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah, the, fir the first time I saw her, uh, Dallas came to Charm City to play when I was repping for them, and I was so impressed. Right now, back in action, is lead jammer is J.K. Rowling for Rose City. Oh, inside line. No one sees her untouched. 5-0 right now so far. Still beautiful, coming. Beautiful, beautiful jam so far. Look at this white wall keeping the jammer. I believe that's Goldie keeping jo Goldie in the pack. And now uh, Jake rolling in for trying, looking for a second grand slam, and has to recycle and set back, and she didn't want to get that track cut. Oh, nice move by Shanita. Stretcher is going to force her back to the end of the line. Now she's facing a big wall of blue. Goldie finally through. I'm pretty sure that Shanita Stretcher only has nice moves, by the way. <laughs> But she will call up with, I think, 9-0, maybe 10-0. Let's see if this will all five on the second one. Uh, it looked like a four, but I could be wrong. So we'll call that, yep, that is 9-0 for Rose City. Now 126 to 42. Rose City, I think so far, has been winning this half, but they've got a long, long way to go to get back, in, to get back in, within striking distance. And, and there's a little uh, Wheels of Justice chant from the crowd. Got to love that. That is, that is so confusing for me. Here we go, next jam. And lead jammer very quickly lead goes to uh, Philadelphia's V Diva. Meanwhile, Joyride trying to get through that four wall up front for Philly. Now, uh, Joyride is able to get around. We're seeing somebody being sent from the box, unclear on who that was. Uh, 
V Diva is going to call it off, but not in time, I don't think. Yeah, there's points for Rose City right there. So right now, the uh, new score, 127 to 42, f favoring Philadelphia. I'm sorry, 44 update. So 127-44, favoring Philadelphia. If you're just joining us, uh, we should mention right now, and again, I don't want to, I don't want to overemphasize this. Philadelphia is doing extremely well against Rose City. However, on the on the other hand, Rose City has none of their primary demo rotation as called Eagle injured, White Flight not here, and Sulfuric Acid not here. They've been running a demo rotation we haven't really seen so far this year from Rose City. And right now, it is uh, untamed through out there as the Rose City Jammer. She is stuck in the pack and in danger of being lapped now by Teflon Donna, who's coming for her first scoring pass. Untamed through one to beat. That's the Philly pivot right now. And she is through, but Teflon Donna's going to try and finish off what I think will be a 4 0. She can get her on Mel Mangles. Mel Mangles, nice block in there, but force out of bounds. And Teflon's going to have to call it here. Let's see if she got it in time. Looking for the score here. Looks like Teflon got her four. I do not think that Rose City. Oh, no, Rose City did get three. So uh, uh, the ghost points is there are two blockers in the box for Philadelphia. So passing that one allowed Rose City to pick up three. So Rose City managing to keep it around 90 points or 80, 90 point margin since about the half. Definitely a, an uphill climb right now for Rose City. With a, a, a lighter roster than they used to. Right now, it's a lead jammer for Rose City. That's uh, going to be J.K. Rowling, number nine four. Excuse me, nine three four for Rose City. The jammer for Philadelphia is Mo Payne. Now J.K. Rowling trying to go on their outside, can't quite find daylight. Nice clearing block by Rose City's Frank and Herder. Beautiful move right there. And that will make a five point pass for Rose City. Mo Payne's still stuck. And as I say that, she becomes unstuck. And the Rose will call it. Oh, it looks like uh, JK Rowling is holding her shoulder. She was called off in a major back block. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, a fourth minor back block Either way, that's a power down Philadelphia at the worst possible time where Rose City was starting to make a little comeback there. They lose the advantage, and now it is Mo Payne unopposed. Let's see how Rose City is able to play their defense here. Philadelphia is going to choose to set up a wall in the back, make space through the middle for their general Mo Payne. They're going to stay back and not try to engage with here. Rose City so far doing a good job keeping within 10 feet. We see one Philly Rocket now going up, and now Philly has to change the offense. All kinds of back and forth action right here. Philadelphia once again goes slow, going to that no engagement offense, and it works out as Mo Payne is through with another five. Again, really bad timing here for Rose City. Now Mercy, it is a one on four situation. An wow. apex jump from Mo Payne. Five points with oh, one Beautiful, jump. jumped right over Mercy's leg and half the track. Rose City being eaten alive by Darren, Pe or excuse me, all penalties right now. They only have two on the track, four for Philadelphia. The absolute worst situation to be in an order would be a four on one when your jammer's in the box. That really hurts. And that's when the, those apex jumps, you just got to get one, and you got the entire five, which is one move. And that's what we saw Mo Payne do right there. And right now, suddenly, Philadelphia has increased their lead to 99 points, which, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, is one less than 100. Whoa, you are good at math, sir. Yeah. Not always, like but right now you just were. Yeah, so right now you're going to hear the house announcers saying thank you so much to the EMTs and the medical staff because it looks like the jammer for Rose City is being attended to while she's in the penalty box. Yeah, we, actually, we, 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 wow, we, we it looks like she is going to leave the track. And um, 
Yeah, when, when, when she was hit, oh, she was holding I'm her shoulder. I'm sorry, she's going to leave the penalty box holding ice out. She's going to have a substitute in the sin yeah. bin, Justice. Yeah, when, when she was hit, she was holding her shoulder, and clearly that is what she's icing right now. So it looked like it might, might have been, I mean, we, we really can't speculate from this far away, but it might have been a little separation or a uh, aggravation of something that had been hit previously. But it was very clear as soon as she was hit, she was immediately grasping that shoulder. So it was clear where that pain is coming from. Oh, and you're going to hear a lot of clapping from the audience, but it's not from their hands. It's from the little hand clappers. <laughs> Billy Motion is throwing out on behalf of Rydell. There's been a score update. It's now 151 Philly, 55 for Rose City. So it is not as close to 100 as it was. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> not as close. So, yes, RollerCon. Let me talk about it for a minute. <laughs> um, and I do apologize. I'm still full-time working. I'm the announcer manager, so I'm still full-time taking care of details. <laughs> That's why I keep cutting in and out. I do apologize. But I cannot tell you how impressive this year is. But do you know how awesome it's going to be when it's in Australia? Rollercon down under. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I just did an internet thing. I don't know what it means, but I did it. Um, so, yeah, you and I will be in, I'm assuming you're going because I'm going to mm -hmm. find a way to get there. I will Absolutely. swim there. <laughs> I will punch every shark in the face, and I will swim there. It's November 30th to December 2nd. You can go to RollerCon.com for more info. Or if you're old school like me and you want to go to RollerCon.net, have fun <laughs> with that one. Anyway, back to the action on the track. Just uh, two blockers on the track for Rose City, and that's going to make a quick lead jammer for Rose City's Goldie. Actually, that's going to be Philly's Goldie, but I understand I, the confusion. I can't, I can't use words. I'm sorry. There are two teams on the track. <laughs> one of them is Rose. One of them is Philly. It's Vegas. You had pretty good odds. You lost. <laughs> but check I it out. Your friend Goldie, who skates for? Uh, Philadelphia Roller Girls Liberty Bells out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Out of Pennsylvania. That yeah. is true. Just picked up five points. That's a grand slam for her. Joyride still stuck behind a pretty good front wall right here for Philadelphia. And here comes Goldie for more points. Could be 10 0 so far. Goldie is through again, 5 0. And Philadelphia has now increased it to over 100 points right now. Right now, the scoreboard Troy 161 Philly, 55 for Rose City. F Philly buried very much in the driver's seat right now. Joyride now looking at a wall of three. Slowing down effectively on her at the front and recycling her about the mid pack right now. We're seeing uh, Goldie right now stuck in the back of the pack, but unfortunately for Rose City, Joyride not going anywhere. Oh, and almost, almost, almost pulls a major track cut, but realizes what she's about to do. Steps back and all the way back. She needs a stretcher just smiling at her, being like, I know what you gotta do. You gotta come all the way back here. And Joyride having a not having a joy hurt right now. Not having a joy for ride. It's more <laughs> no. like a frustration ride, but she just yeah. got past she needed a stretcher, so that's a bit of joy for her. Wesley Willis might call it a hell ride. Here comes uh, Goldie yet again for did more points. Did you just points. drop a Wesley Willis <laughs> reference? I did indeed because I'm old. Oh, my God. And you live in Chicago. <laughs> I do. I do. I did. Rock and roll McDonald's. <laughs> oh, look at that. Beautiful and by Goldie. Holy shnikes. Stayed right on the Rock edge of the Rock over Philly <laughs> Rock on Chicago. Wow. Calls it off, and Philadelphia adds a big, big mark to their score right there. 170 equating a score update to 55 for Rose City. And this, I think that that jam might have really sealed the deal for Philly. There's a good 16 minutes left, but that's a huge, huge mountain for Rose City to climb. Every, lining, every jam lining up very tight on that jam line for this for, uh, second half. <laughs> it's not the first half, by the way. It is not the first half. This is the second of two oh, halves. Please. <laughs> I think I need a palindrome high five to wake me up. <laughs> So about 15 minutes, 40 seconds left as Rose City is going to attempt to like narrow this significant Rose uh, Philadelphia lead. But they won't do it that time. As Ooh, Rose v Diva is gets right up there. And just in time. It sneaks past Untamed Shrew, number 21 for Rose. And v Diva is going to take the foremost position. And she's going to go to Jammer Defense. I'm not, I'm not sure that... I, I think she's doing this for fun right now. <laughs> Rose City's... Rose City has people in the box. Philly does not. So v I think she is just having fun. Oh, oh wow. and she has some fun on that one. Oh, but that is a low block. Low block major. She had too much fun. She Too much fun, <laughs> said Wanton Rebellion. You had too much fun, said Wanton Rebellion. That is your penalty. 
But a uh, nice block right there to force. All right, that's a major track cut. Going to the box, Rose City needing that power jam. Gets oh, nothing. Slipping right out of their grasp, oh, Justice. Wow. Yeah, that, that was just uh, not, not awareness on Jammer right there to uh, not realize that she was being forced to track cut. Thought that she was clear to re-enter. Was not. Went right to the box. V Diva returns from the box. Mel Mangles gets all oh, over V Diva. Perfect block on V Diva, taking her out, stayed on her tiptoes. V Diva was saying, Did she go out of bounds? She did not. It is a bit confusing because the inside blue looks like that's where the track ends. But right, if you look, right. there's also an edge of brown there. So Mel Mangles, nice job staying in. Although now she's going to the penalty box for something else. Lots but, of skaters going <laughs> to the box right and now. And there's another one. So we're, we're now a 3 1 pack right now, favoring Rose City. Just one blocker out there for, for Philadelphia. And we were talking about earlier, sorry, again, the wrong whistles threw us off. There are still four seconds left in this jam. And jam ends on time as both jammers enter the box during that one. We were talking earlier about how when you have that two, when you have two blockers on the track and the second one gets called off right after the penalty box, that's the worst possible time because that person has to exit the track and go all the way around before she is waved off meaning you can have the longest possible time of having just won the track. That's yeah. happened multiple times tonight, and it has not helped either team because when you have that one-on-four, one-on-three situation, that is a jammer it's, yeah, nightmare. Yeah, it's, it's very, very, very frustrating. Mm -hmm. Scoreboard reads 63 for Rose City, 179 for Philly. 13-16 left on the clock. We have an untamed shrew is trying to get lead for Rose City right here. Nice spin move, but she is sent to the box on a track cut. Another power jam for Philadelphia Liberty Bells, and they're just going to add more to their score right here. Looks like a Teflon Donna is going to be off to the races here. Let's see how Philly plays this power jam. They're going to not engage, I don't think. They're going to let Teflon on a fight her way through. Yeah, and they are. Mercy's going to try to bridge. Nice work, but Teflon's going to push the last blocker out of play. Yeah, this is a re really smart bridging by Rose City, but when you do that, it's really only a matter of time, especially when you only have two on the track, which is what they have right now. That is uh, Mercy and number 66 for Rose City. That is Brady Punch. And she's through again. Ten points for Philadelphia so far. And Mel Mangles is going right back to the box. Rob uh, Officer is saying, stop asking why. Just get exactly. there. Exactly. I couldn't agree with you more, Rob. There's nothing more frustrating to me as a teammate, as a bench coach, somebody on the track, than when I see people arguing ref calls. What mm. is the point, Justin? Exactly. Let's get there and talk about it. Talk about long it later. Afterwards. Yes. <laughs> right. Now a four on two situation is favoring Philadelphia. Teflon Donna once again. Uh, Philly's gonna just let her do her thing. Oh, Mercy managed to work it out. Oh, but his nail trying to come backwards. And this is one of the oddest things. When you see somebody just trying to get behind the wall and are nailed by somebody who is skating forward, the person who's trying to reset and not hit gets the penalty. That is Mercy right now who is skating backwards. Contact occurred, and she was sent to the box for trying to get behind that Philly wall because she made it, uh, counter or clockwise contact. And now Philadelphia... I'm going to go ahead and say it. Destroying Rose City. 209 to 63. A huge blow right now. I don't think anybody expected Rose City I to defeat Rocky deny. Mountain and Rose City by the amount of points they did. Philadelphia really having a great weekend out right now. Yeah, come in, they traveled really, really far to be here. And I'm going to say it was worth the money. Rose City has called their second time out with 11.17 left on the clock. And th this is this is going to be a. It, it's it's really hard to analyze Philadelphia's weekend right here. Uh, yesterday, uh, if you saw the the Rocky Mountain game, Rocky Mountain having incredible incredible penalty trouble, where they literally had a 10 minute stretch where they had two on the track because every, every single, single time. time somebody had to serve, uh, going uh, had to stay on the track to go to go in as she was already in the penalty box queue. Tonight. A, or excuse me, today, a little bit different as Rose City often in plenty of trouble, but their their primary issue right now is that they don't have any of their A jammers. And so it's, it's hard when, like, when Philadelphia, as you said, has traveled a long way to be here, is playing top-level competition. Both Rose City and Rocky Mountain definitely going to be top contenders at Westerns. Both of them have a really good shot at going to championships. So putting up those score totals on teams that, that are that good is a very impressive achievement. That being said, both Rocky Mountain and Rose City, I don't think, have played their best game this weekend. Well, I don't disagree with that statement at all, Justice. <laughs> 
Well, thank you for your support, Val. That's very kind of Anytime, you. Anytime, Brohan. <laughs> we have a lead jammer already very fast. That is, that is uh, I want to say Mo Payne. Yes, I'm going to say you are correct, sir. Fantastic. And guess where she skates? Uh, for oh, Philly Roller Girls. Up. Is that in Pennsylvania? Yes, ma'am. And she is skating for the Penley box right now. As she may call it major track cut on a pretty light pack right there. So tough break for Philadelphia. Yeah. But I think that they might be able to absorb this jam with the score the way it is. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Again, <laughs> wow. Uh, three in a row. I'm Wha on fire. Oh. Oh, so, something's going on on the track here. The uh, I am unclear what's happening. Rob Lobster is about to freak out. He might have a heart attack. I surely hope he doesn't because I love Voodoo Donuts, and we need those to continue to be made. The, the jammer was not released for a little while, and I, am, I, I'm, I apologize. I am not certain whether or not that that was. Oh. oh. Now, this is what I got to ask. I got to wonder, did that ref see her go out of bounds, or did he see her go off the blue? It was in that mm -hmm. area. Yeah, it was yeah, in, that, that, was, that was a very, very I would very say the gray call. area, but it's yeah. actually the brown area. <laughs> either, either way, that is a roasty jammer in the box. And a very, very uh, odd jam so far. Right now, both jammers are in the box, so we have a jammerless jam. The most exciting moment in roller derby where nobody can score. Yes! <laughs> Just what I've been waiting for. The crowd is going the opposite of wild right now. Well, well they are going wild, Longest but, but not in a good way. Longest 10 seconds ever. Thank you, Ginger. Thank you. I mean, yeah, thank you, Copper Top. I see the red hair. I think Ginger Vitus. Thank you. Thank you, Mel Bangles. <laughs> thank you, Kickassity. As the block has nothing to do, all they can do is do-si-do. -si -do. Mercy is just saying, so what's your favorite part of RollerCon so far? <laughs> Three seconds left in the jam. We will see Philly. Wow. Look at the jam. Oh. I think that was her favorite part of RollerCon right there. At the last second taken down. Are they leg wrestling? That was last <laughs> night, ladies. A By the way, Demanda Riot, I'm going to give it to her. She won leg <laughs> wrestling. I think she lost maybe one challenge, maybe two, out of the 40-something challenges in a row that she did. The, the Mandarin, it, much like the Wu-Tang, was not something that I would wish to F with. <laughs> we have a huge lead for Philly right now, 213 to 63, after a very, very odd jam that saw both cameras go to the box. I think we saw three That's 150 families. points. That's, that's what it is. Bam! <laughs> I'm waking up, we got a, Nation. We've got an OTA right now. Uh, the clock is stopped on 8.54, but Philadelphia almost certain to win this one. Like, as we were saying, two big unexpected wins. And not, not just unexpected wins, but the size of their wins are significant this weekend as they took down Rocky Mountain. They were up by nearly 100 late in that game. I don't have the final score in front of me, but definitely a solid win for uh, Philadelphia last night. And today, no question, unless the oddest last eight 40, 854 ever played occurs right now. <laughs> we will see a big Philly win. The tonight. oddest <laughs> last 854. Well, so while we're waiting for the Zebras to high-five each other and do what they do best, which is get the game underway and keep the action on the track, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about RollerCon because you know what? Where are we? We are at RollerCon. I think this is day four. Who knows? I don't know. I've been here since Monday, so right, yeah. the, the, screw it. Hard, hard to tell these days. Yeah. I don't even know what time it is. I haven't seen daylight <laughs> in four days, I think, five days maybe. But that's because this is so overwhelmingly awesome. Yes. I cannot express to you how amazing RollerCon is. I don't know. Everybody's saying, oh, Val Capone, it's because you work for RollerCon. <laughs> Dude, I pay to be here. I, I pay my own flight. I pay for my own uh -huh. hotel. I have volunteered enough hours, though, that I have earned a free pass. All you have to nice. do is work 24, excuse me, 25 hours. That's a, it. A, a mere 25 hours. Which sounds one like One more a hour lot. than a day. One more hour than a day. You can work for one day plus one hour. <laughs> But, you know, you break that up over a couple days, it's really no big deal. You work a couple yeah. hours as, as security, part of the dick's crew, <laughs> maybe clean up after some slobs as the mom's crew. Work oh, there with are, me. There are no slobs at Oracon. Never. I mean, yeah, everyone's real neat here. No, very neat. Not at all <laughs> sloppy drunk. What? I, no. I, 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 also, I also want to say um, I've never seen a Oracon that had a, a venue this good looking. The track, the, the sky boxes, everything this year for the, the uh, whoop the sanction bouts and the main challenge track, the Razor Slut track. 
absolutely looks really, really good. Yeah, it, this is amazing. This is the kind of stuff that I want to see as Derby progresses. This mm -hmm. is how every event mm -hmm. should be ran. And th th there's a there's good seating for all the fans. It's pretty it's pretty close, and it's close to the track. And as you're saying, the Skybox uh, area is a very, very uh, and good And I think some viewpoint. of the games were like five bucks. So yeah, for five yeah. bucks, you could have a perfect seat where you could see all the action unfold in front right. of you, just like you had a DNN view, but you were actually there. You are there. It would kind of be exactly like being there. And, and not only all these awesome challenge bouts, but the first time that Rolicon has had this many Wolfdust sanctioned bouts of this high level. Almost every team here, I, I think the only exception is Denver, went to championships last year, and all of them have a really good shot at making it this year. So you're going to see some of the best and high, highest level derby possible these, this weekend here at RollerCon. And not just the fun challenge bouts, too. There are two full-time tracks going. This one that we're looking at is the Razor Slut track. But the Great Dame track is a competition track that has nonstop um, challenge bouts on it, 30-minute challenges. But then there's also all the training tracks. I mm -hmm. mean, Jackie Daniels, Demanda Riot, Quadzilla, um, Adam Collider, um, Smarty Pants. I mean, there's so many coaches. Oh, I can go pants. on and on and on and on about the best minds in Derby, even better than yours, Justice. Can you believe it? No, I, I refuse to believe you. That's fair. Lead Jammer V Diva. I refuse to believe that. Oh, wait. <laughs> there is, oh, there's that, that L. Incontrovertible fact. Oh, v man. Diva if is I can turn back time. Now stuck behind a wall of three, but it's going to take that Philly non engagement offense, fight her way through and gets out with five more points from Philadelphia, adding to a pretty big lead so far. Another Rose City skater uh -huh. going to the penalty box, Justice. Penalty troubles eating Philly's opponents alive both tonight, last night and this morning, or this afternoon, some would say. Rose City does have their jammer back. That is uh, number 28, Untamed Shrew. V no, that is actually number 28, Minstrel Cycle. Oh. I take it back. Wrong, well, wrong 20. Here comes B Diva taking her time as she can since her team is winning by a billion points. And she's through again. Your Five math, more. Your math is wrong. That's not a billion. They're <laughs> I'm, winning I'm sorry, by quite just, a bit. Just a million. I'm sorry. So that's <laughs> 60 points. 160 points. Minstrel Psycho is still trying to, trying to find her way through. One to beat. Nice bridging for Philly right here. Knocked out and a nice move back there. She needs a stretcher. Just sorry, I couldn't tell if that was either or not. Once again, the angle we're at makes it really hard to see numbers. That was not changing anyway. I can't tell from here who that was. I think Damage Doll. That was Damage okay. Doll. Okay. Yep. Damage Doll has white legs, white um white socks, I mean on her legs. White skates. And V Diva is coming for yet more. It's gonna take it slow because why not? She has all the time in the world. In fact, she has at least seven minutes, <laughs> seven seconds on the jam. And she'll call it just in time. I don't think that Rose City will pick up points on that jam. Looking for, nope, zero for Rose City. Rob Lobster is out in the center of the track again, fighting the good fight. Don't know that it's going to make much difference, but you know what? You got to do that for your team. Exactly. exactly. As a bench coach, you got to do that. Whether it matters or not, you got to show your team that he's still in it, so you better be too. 230 points for Philly, 63 for Rose City. If Vegas put odds on this game and you bet on this outcome, you are rich. Whoa, way that, to be rich. <laughs> that, that is a Just as we are rich, because we are watching Flat Track Roller Derby. We are rich in our hearts. <laughs> Not in our wallets, that's exactly. for damn sure. <laughs> and here comes another lead jammer of Philadelphia. That is Teflon Donna with a good lead on number 21. And that is Untamed Shrew coming around, and she there is out. But uh, about a half track behind is Teflon Donna coming up for scoring first. Rose City once again in a unfortunate situation as they have three. Teflon now is going to call it off. Oh, wait, that was odd. It looked like she, she's going to go for she it. She thought about it and then did not actually tap her hips. Well, she got the signal from her bench to say, mm -hmm. keep it going, girl, all day, all day. Keep having fun. At this point, uh, which, so, you know, I mean, honestly, when you're looking at it, yeah, it doesn't affect their rankings, but people are still going to look at this mm -hmm. later on and go, well, how much did Philly beat Rose City by? Otherwise, you know, they'd be playing their blockers as jammers as opposed to their starting right. line of jammer, jammers still. At this point, you don't really need Teflon Donna to jam. You don't really need mm -hmm. Vdiva to jam. You mm -hmm. can you can jam your second string jammers, but I think Philly's just running up that scoreboard so they can keep padding that lead. 
I, I'm confident that right now Philip is having a damn good time. <laughs> I I agree. I, I, I expect they, they came in this weekend hoping to you know you know be able to get one maybe two by close bouts. But what they've done is come in. They have really annihilated two of the top teams in the Western region. Last night, Rocky Mountain by I'll say about 50, 60 points, even though they're ahead by 100 early. And right now, absolutely dismantling Rose City right now. Lead jammer again goes to uh, Philadelphia. Four minutes and 50 seconds left on the period clock. One minute and 42 seconds on the jam. So Philly's just going to have a play day with it. Mercy is the only person putting a hit on Philly Jammer. They, will keep, they will keep it going, Goldie. They will keep it going. Because right now, Philly basically playing the clock. As they know, as long as they have lead, Rossi cannot put up any huge jams without being stopped. And Mel Mangles was nailed right there, taken to the back. Well, so was Goldie. They both. It looked like they were both trying to take a nap for just a second. <laughs> they both laid sprawled out straight up on their back, but they're up and at them. Mel is through. She has scored, but that's fine for Philly because Philly right now has the advantage in this jam. Right now, though, the pen, the pen situation is favoring Rose City. Four on two pack favors Rose City, and Goldie is going to keep it going anyway. So Can't stop the point scoring there, Justice. Four more added on the board for Rose City. Dealing with uh, Jake here, only I think right now pivot out there for Rose City, trying to hold the front of the pack, dealing with a goalie right now. And I think this time she's going to call it, I would assume, as Rose City would equalize with a, with a pass here. And there, yep, there it is. There's a call. And just in time, Rose City does not score on that pass. And Philadelphia now could possibly win this game by 200 points. There's still three and a half minutes left. And the score is 250 for Philadelphia and only 74 for Rose City. I'm very curious to see what happens later tonight with uh, Rose City plays Denver, the uh, unofficial two Rose City with unofficial three Denver. Um, given uh, Rose City performance right now, I'm, I would expect Denver to be able to have a good game against them, given as they are pretty shorthanded, Rose City. And... You know, Denver has the advantage of coming in fresh and clean, not just physically, but mm -hmm. also mentally. Mm -hmm. A kind of a loss like this can be very, very difficult for somebody to deal with, even though they should just blow it off as, all right, you know what, we got this. Let's make, let's make up for it going against Denver. But, you know, hopefully this game will not get within the helmets of the wheels of justice. Right, right. They're very nice helmets, by the way. <laughs> and around the outside, that's going to be a four-point jam. Calls it off. We're going to go into the next jam with under 2.30 on the clock, so it could be the last jam. But it depends on whether or not a timeout is called or the jam ends early. Either way, Philadelphia is not going to lose this game. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I, you know what? <laughs> I was kind of questioning your logic, but I will no longer question your logic because <laughs> I just looked up at the scoreboard and I, um, I agree with you. If there was a 121-point uh, discrepancy on the score sheet, it's possible. Let's not talk about <laughs> point discrepancy, sir. Lead jammer is Rose City. They are on their way. Aw, Untamed <laughs> Shrew is so cute. She just pointed to the crowd, and she's like, I did this for you. She did get lead jammer. She peels off one skater. Now she's got a two-wall of blue in front of her. In comes the white to break it up. Calls she gets through, and she calls, and it gives herself couple of air high fives. She deserves it. So we will definitely get at least one more jam, maybe two more out of this one. So I got to say, uh, one of the cool things about RollerCon is all the different people that you get to skate with. But as an announcer, it's a thrill of mine that I'm about to uh, get off this mic and go announce with Jerry Seltzer, which I'm pretty oh, excited about. Nice. He's my husbitch. I'm pretty <laughs> excited. He's my derby husbitch. But more importantly, I love you, Jerry, but this is thrilling me even more. Uh, a certain lady took my announcing class, an 11-year-old. Nice. And I told her she was allowed to announce if she attended both 101 and 201, and she sure did. So Jerry Seltzer, myself, and an 11-year-old <laughs> are going to be announcing a game on the Dame track. Very nice. Just trying to tell you guys how awesome RollerCon can be. Right now, our lead jammer is uh, Rose City. I want to say that's J.K. Rowling. Am I incorrect in that? Oh, I am. That's a blast, unicorn. I should have known better. <laughs> When with, I saw that jammer horn. With only 40 seconds left in the period, a minute 30 left in the jam. Mercy trying to take out Teflon Donna. It's uh, Castro putting a block on Blast Unicorn, but not enough to hold her back. Here she comes, Blast Unicorn. 
Won the wow, beat. Wow, that was a giant fall on yeah. Shanita Stretcher. Gets through again. Oh, she even is holding her bum going, yeah, well, that one hurt. So right now, Rosa is basically trying to make this margin a little bit less and going, in, going into the last 10 seconds of the period. Five Seven points for Rose City. I'm, I'm curious to see what Rose City does here. They, do, they have a game against Denver later on. I'm thinking right now you just call it because the score is... I agree. Uh, it, yeah. I personally, why are you trying to run up the score? Is this for pride yeah. or is this because you want to play more? I mean, I, I think call it. Yeah, and it, it's one thing if you're not playing again the same day. But if you need to uh, play somebody in your own region... And not the, just that, yeah. but a fresh somebody right. who has not played, who has not had a giant loss. Right. Well, I mean, let, let, I mean let, 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 let's not be too hard on Rose City. Clearly, no, 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 if, 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 they're, if, they're, oh, if they're having a good jam, they haven't had too many of those this, this game, so we might as well try and run it. But Hey, why not but, try to break 100? You but, might as well. Right, you know? exactly. At least you got that victory. And, and oh, there you go. There, saying, there's no, the call off. 15 seconds left from the jam. This game is O D E R. And Philadelphia. You can spell too? I can, I can, there's only four letters, though, you know. That's, that's, that's all I can do. Philadelphia has absolutely dismantled Rose City here in the first game. And they got to 100, so Rose City did, in fact, if they were trying to get that, they got it. Look final, at that. final score looks like the unofficial final right now. 259 for Philly, 101 for Rose City. So Philadelphia with a huge upset win over Rose City. Uh, once again, if you're joining us late, Rose City did not have any of their three primary jammers. No sulfuric acid from Team USA. No uh, white flight. And, of course, Scald Eagle was injured at UCDX a month ago. So we won't see her for a while. But definitely, when we saw Rose City play Windy City early in the season, we saw uh, Scald and white flight go almost the entire game. And in, at uh, UCDX, we had saw uh, white flight and sulfuric acid go almost the entire time. This time, none of those three available. And it's chosen the scoreboard. Philadelphia destroys Rose City 259 to 101. It was the first, first day of WFD sanctioned action. It's oh, only me, the first, first day. Game, first game, but the second day of the sanctioned action. At 315, Philadelphia will be back in action. Please join us for that. And at 7, we will see Rose City taking on.